almost all of the connected devices that we use every day, like the Fitbit that just told me that amazingly, I've already done 10,000 steps today because you can't move around here without walking half a mile. He made that. He made all the Fitbit products. He makes almost all of Fitbit's competitors' products. Anyway, tell us a little bit about what you do do and what Flextronics does just to get started. Yeah, thanks, David. You know, Flextronics, as you mentioned, is, is the second largest manufacturer in the world. But I think people kind of lose sight of what, what is that truly? What does it really mean? When you think of Flextronics, you actually have to think of kind of something like the elephant in the room from the standpoint that we go way beyond just manufacturing. We're really on the front end of innovation. We're right. really on the front end of enabling customers to kind of go from an initial sketch or a concept all the way to scaling a new iconic product. So for me, it's a much broader uh, uh, solution set than just a simple manufacturing solution. In terms of manufacturing, you know, we're in 200,000 people in 30 countries. and, and 200,000 people. 200,000 people, and yeah, so it's a very large operation, every, almost every country you can imagine. Uh, doing work across a very diversified uh, group of customers and industries. We're in the automotive industry, we're in the consumer industry, as you just mentioned, we're in the medical industry, we're in industrial, energy, telecom. Anything you can think of, we're probably doing it, if, it's, if it ties into technology and innovation. Now, the roots of Flextronics are making things like PCs, right? I mean, there's still a lot of that that happens, yeah. I'm sure, but that's where you really grew into a colossus, was building desktop and laptop PCs and, and other devices in that earlier era, right? Yeah, that's right. If you go back in time, you know, our volume, the, really the creation of, of massive scale and size came from things like consumer products and came from, you know, phones and tap PCs and TVs and a lot of those things that require lots of people, lots of factory space, lots of equipment. So that gave us an enormous amount of scale. But then you saw innovation start to shift. And the concept of how you make a PC versus a wearable device like Fitbit is massively different. So yeah. how we have to go engage and enable those customers uh, on clear core technologies to enable that solution uh, is different now than it was then. So the company grew scale on the back of big manufacturing and then grew technology and innovation on the back of the changes in the evolution of products. Well, the diversity of what Flextronics does has really radically grown, I would think. And the Internet of Things must be putting that on steroids, right? It, it is. You know, we, 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 like the, we like the phrase Internet of Things. It's, uh, it's one that's been around for a while, and it, and, it, and it makes sense in a way. But we actually go further than that. We don't think in our company about the Internet of Things. We really think about the intelligence of things. Because for us, the idea that everything is connected is kind of standard. We assume now in our lives that everything will be connected. But is it intelligently connected? Does it actually provide data and feedback and actions that you want it to do? So right now, we're very focused on those technologies that take you from just a basic internet of things to a world of intelligence of things where everything is connected, everything is smart, and everything is enabling you to go from your body, like a wearable device, to your home, like a connected home device, to your Ford pickup truck, which is right here, uh, in, inside that atmosphere, and then on into office everywhere else. Well, this is the real question of the Internet of Things. I mean, yes, it's possible to put a radio into a lot of different things or a transponder or something, but how do you get that layer of intelligence that will give us real smart control, real efficiencies in life and make our lives actually better? I mean, I don't think we're really there yet. Even the way my Fitbit syncs with my iPhone could be improved. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's good enough. I use it, but, you know... I, I think that's where we're at today. I think you described it accurately. That today, we're, we're in that place where things are connected and they're becoming smart, but, but you don't have that ecosystem built. So, so we really have to focus on how does that sensor technology tie to that human interface technology, tie to how it's going to uh, work in a software equos, ecosystem to really create that content and that data that connects things very seamlessly and it gives you feedback in a very transparent way. We're not there yet. I think you're starting to see that this year at CES. I think this is the first time when you look at CES and you say, you know what? People get it. They understand that it's not just about being connected. It's not just about IoT, Internet of Things. It's about IoT, Intelligence of Things. It's about a new kind of network. Yes. More than about a new kind of thing, really. Yeah. And as yeah. you think about that, the thing about better data, more accurate data, more relevant data, you also think about security of data. 
So one of the things that we're very focused on is understanding you know, our customers and our customers' customers, how do they think about security? And is security a, purely a software discussion? Or is it a combination of software and hardware? And the more it comes down to hardware interacting with software to make that happen, we engage and we use those, those technologies that we're creating to help create security and the confidence that your data is your data. What's the coolest thing that you, were, you know is underway that, or category of thing that, you know, maybe you can't mention companies, but what's the kind of thing that's coming that might be the coolest that people don't, aren't really thinking about that'll be a, a sort of a next benchmark in the progress of this trend? There's a couple of them. And I think, you know, for me, one of the things that I'm seeing this year, uh, more so than I've seen in the last years, is the convergence of medical and consumer wearable devices. So, you know, wearable devices started out on your wrist or on your foot and your shoe. They're migrating to your clothing. They're migrating to Band-Aid type applications where it's literally stuck to your skin. Those technologies, uh, we're enabling those companies and helping those companies create these technologies. Those start to, to converge with medical companies and, and doctors who want to understand what's happening on the body in a much more real time, much more relevant um, you know, uh, aspiration. Right now, it's great that we can monitor foots, you know, footsteps and, and how far you well, went. Well, I do and, sleep more because I measure it. I actually, I'm pretty convinced yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's a health intervention right there. So that's, a, so that's a great invention and a great amount and a great detail, a great piece of data. But what if, you're, what if your doctor is warned when your blood pressure spikes above a certain, a certain yeah, level? Yeah. What happens if you start to go into a pre-heart attack kind of condition and the sensor on your body is able to warn a hospital and call an ambulance yeah. to come and get you. So where I see convergence today is exactly there. Consumer products built for you know, the consumer in mind, you know, built for what you want to wear on your body, on your clothing, whatever, but taking that to a place that says, we're going to save your life. And to me, I think we're not far away from a time where we're actually saving lives with a technology that is built into a wearables technology. That's pretty amazing. I mean, so how far away? Like a year away, you know, five years away? I'd say within the next 18 months. 18 months. You'll see really concrete health impact of connected devices. And it'll be discussed. People will be aware of it. If we get our job done. Well, you, you better. <laughs> Please do.